Greetings, my friends. Welcome to another study through the Psalms. Today we'll be looking at Psalm 49. So if you want to open up your Bibles to Psalm 49, there's just 20 verses in this Psalm. It is to the chief musician, starts right off that way. And so it is a song for a public consumption. Everybody is supposed to be, be able to sing this song. And it says a Psalm of the Sons of Korah. And they were in charge of worship. And so they wrote this Psalm. The theme of this, it seems to be, is um, death. And those who trust in themselves and uh, the futility of that trusting in yourself, there is a time that we are all appointed for. It says in Hebrews 9, 27, it is appointed for man to die once, and after this comes the judgment. I love that it says after this. For all those who think there's no after this, the Bible clearly says that there is an after this. And so it's something that we should all be thinking of, not ignoring Especially, I think, as you get a little older, you should be thinking about the, the way that you are going to spend eternity because the Bible is clear in that there is an eternity. Your soul lives forever, and uh, it does no good for you to just trust in your own self, trust in your own resources, trust in your own riches, your own wisdom, your own strength. Uh, we need to depend upon the Lord, the soul, needs to be redeemed. And I think that you'll see this theme in this psalm, the psalm of Korah. It says in verses 1 through 4, To the chief musician, a psalm of the sons of Korah, Hear this, all peoples. Give ear, all inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. Those first four verses he calls right out. This is not just to the Jewish people. It is to all peoples, and it says all inhabitants of the world. So it goes to everyone in the world that in that time and in our time. And notice that it sa he says to low and high, rich and poor together. doesn't matter what station of life that you are in. He calls you to listen, listen to the wisdom, wisdom that actually comes from, from God. And he says in verse 3, And the meditation of my heart shall give understanding. This, this meditation, as they write down this psalm, this meditation will give understanding. It will help you to understand. It said, I will incline my ear to a proverb. I will disclose my dark saying on the harp. He is going to put it to music. And that's the, what it's designed for, to put this to music. Uh, but let's go on. Verses 5 through 9 say, Why should I fear in the days of evil when the iniquity of at my heel surrounds me? You know, uh, this, this verse here, right, that says that, that this is in contrast to those that he's going to mention. He's not going to fear as the day uh, approaches, the appointed day of death. And uh, he, he's not going to fear because he has put his trust in God. And it's in, in stark contrast to who he's going to talk about later in the, the next few verses. Verse 6, those who trust in their wealth and boast in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their souls is costly, and it shall cease forever, that he should continue to live eternally and not see the pit. Now, I just want you to know, you know, he's talking about wealth and boasting in it and riches and things like that. He speaks of those people who tr put their trust in that. I just want to tell you right off the bat, it is not wrong to have wealth. It's only wrong to boast in it. <clears throat> and it so clearly here says that wealth cannot buy salvation. You know, and you can't purchase your brother. If your brother dies, you can't purchase his, you can't redeem his soul. With, with money or anything like that. You can't redeem your own soul. The redemption of a soul 
is very costly. And we know from the Old Testament, uh, the only way redemption could happen is by the blood of an innocent lamb. And so that's what the practice was in the Jewish religion, the blood of an innocent lamb. But we know that we have an innocent lamb and his name was Jesus. We are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why he says he doesn't fear in the days of evil because he has put his trust in, in the redemption that God gives uh, with blood. And so we, we have that, the psalmist here, they didn't see Jesus, they don't know that he was the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world and that it's his blood, that, his precious blood that has redeemed us. But he presents these questions he, he presents this, these people who trust in their own selves and in their own strength, and he makes this truth known to us. The redemption of souls is costly. It's very costly. It costs Jesus his life. <clears throat> you know, what are wealthy people supposed to do? Um, it's, like I said, not wrong to have wealth. It's, it's just wrong to trust in them and to... Um, boast in them. First Timothy chapter 6 verses 17 through 19, Paul tells Timothy as a, a young pastor to tell those who are rich, command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold of eternal life. So instructions to those who are rich, don't trust in uncertain, riches are uncertain, but trust in the living God. He gives us all things to enjoy and do good with what God has given you. If you're you know, take it, okay, what can I do with this surplus of finances that I have? Are you willing to share it? Are you ready to give it? And notice that when you do that, you are treasuring things up in heaven. You are storing up for yourself a good foundation for the time to come. Here we go. Now, we're, we're not saved by our good works. We're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and faith in that blood. But after we're saved, what can we do? What should we do? Well, we should do good works. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So that's what wealthy people are supposed to do, not boast in themselves and in their riches. But let's go on, verses 10 through 14. The psalmist says, For he sees wise men die, likewise the fool and the senseless person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Their inner thought is that their houses will last forever, their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man, though in honor, does not remain. He is like the beasts that perish. This is the way of the, those who are foolish and of the posterity who approve their sayings. Selah, meditate on this. Like sheep they ha are laid in the grave, death shall feed on them, the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall be consumed in the grave far from their dwelling. Notice I, I, there's a couple, a couple times it mentions fool or foolish in this. And, and he's just saying the ways of the world, the wisdom of this world, but people who are wealthy, people who name their lanes after themselves. We see statues, we see all kinds of things, streets named after buildings, named after people, you know, and they think that that's going to be forever. <clears throat> but he says they're leaving their wealth to others. They cannot take it with them. First Timothy chapter 6, again, from, uh, from First Timothy 6, Paul is talking to Timothy uh, you can't take it with you. you, you you're going to leave your wealth to others. Verse 7 says, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men 
in destruction and perdition. So we see t Paul gives us this mo more about, about wealthy people. You can't take it with you. You should learn how to be content and you should not desire to be rich. You know, uh, rich people, uh, are they satisfied? No, most of the time they're saying, well, I want more, I want more. Poor people, what are they saying? I desire to be rich. It's wrong, It needs. we need to be content with such things as we have. In the same chapter, Paul will say, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. And uh, so we see that. I remember, what, what, what was it? They asked uh, Nelson Rockefeller, who was extremely wealthy, how much is enough? And he said, a dollar more. And that's the attitude. I believe when he, he passed away, his, his, uh, they asked his son how much did he leave, and his son said he left all of it. And so here it is in this psalm. We say it's kind of foolish to uh, think this way and that you're going to last forever and that your wealth is going to last forever and you're going to be able to take it with you. Luke chapter 12, I want to read you this account. This is Jesus speaking. It says in verses 15 through 21, He said to them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. And he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain man yielded plentifully. And you know that 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 farmer he said what will i do what am i going to do i yielded so much this year i know i'm going to build up bigger barns and you know my soul will be satisfied and i will be content i will eat, eat drink and be merry but what did god say it says to him in verse 20 but god said to him fool this night your soul will be required of you then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So again, the Bible says, hey, it's not wrong to be wealthy. I kind of think that, okay, why did God allow this man to yield plentifully? I, I think he needed to say, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? He was thinking about himself and he was thinking about his future and he's going to be, oh, I'm, I'm all set. But God said, no, you fool. This night, your soul is required of you. Your soul, that, that part of you that lasts forever. Oh, man. So he tells us, man, so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Let's go on. Verse 15 the psalmist says, But God will redeem my soul from the power of the grave for he shall receive me, say la. I like the psalmist who says, man, God's going to redeem my soul from the power of the grave. We already know how he does that. We do, he does that by the blood of Jesus Christ, believing in him, and the, the grave has no power over you. So I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Great chapter, the whole chapter. Read it on your own, but verses 51 through 54, Paul writes, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must be put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. That's what this psalmist is saying in verse 15. I'm going to be redeemed from the power of death and, and the power of the grave, and he will receive me. The Lord will receive me into his house. And uh, that's, what, that's what we have to look forward to. You shouldn't be afraid if you're a believer. It's appointed for men to die once, and after this comes what? Well, judgment for those who don't believe in Jesus that he paid the price for your sin but for those of us who do we it says here that we're going to put on incorruption 
and uh, death is going to be swallowed up in victory. Verses 16 through 20 of Psalm 49, Do not be afraid when one becomes rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dies, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Like I said, he can't take it with you. Though while he lives, he blesses himself, for men will praise you when you do well for yourself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. A man who is in honor yet does not understand is like the beasts that perish. So again, this contrast here is mostly, this psalm is mostly about those who trust in their own selves and in their own wealth and riches and that they're good. Uh, they are wrong. And uh, he's like a beast that perish. It, it again, it reminds me of another parable uh, in Luke 16, although I, I don't think this is a parable. This, this, this is uh, Jesus speaking of, I believe, a certain two people. Uh, in verses 19 through 61 in Luke 16, there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus full of sores who was laid at his gate desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sore. So we have these two men, a rich man and a beggar. Uh, we don't know the rich man's name, but we know that he did okay, he was eating good in the neighborhood. And Lazarus was at his gate begging, and dogs were coming and licking his sores. Uh, it says in verse 22, So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. So they both died. But the beggar was carried to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man, he, di he died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades. Notice how this is. You know, he's died and, died and was buried. That's not the end. He was in torment in Hades. He lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now is comforted and you are tormented. Notice that this man is seeking mercy, but he did not extend mercy at all to Lazarus in his lifetime. But now he wants mercy, and uh, he even wants uh, Lazarus to serve him. <laughs> but uh, Abraham says, no, there's a great gulf fixed between the two. Nobody can go towards, towards you, and you can't come towards us. Verse 27, then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. Hey, the word of God, Moses, the prophets, they speak of these things. Even the Psalms, the Psalm that we're talking about today, warn us. They continually warn us that there is an appointed day for each one of us, that we will all perish and then we will either come to judgment or enter into the house of the Lord with mercy. And, and, and my point here in these last few verses is that message continues on. Even me as I speak it today. Now, there may be somebody listening that has said, I, I trust in my own goodness. I trust in my own strength. I trust in my own riches. I'm good. I should make it into heaven. Well, this says right here, no, no, no. And you ought to think about it. And even... You know, he says, hey, send somebody. Hey, the Lord is sending everybody every day. He sends me and to give this message of the gospel to everyone. Um, don't put your trust in your own self. Put your trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today for this psalm, psalm written long and long ago, 
was so long ago and, and, and people sang it. The sons of Korah wrote it, Lord, and they were bringing forth information, wisdom for all peoples that we should consider and know that there is a day appointed for each one of us and that we should not trust in ourselves, but we should trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I pray that that would happen today. We would be reminded of it today, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless and have a wonderful day.